In today's video, I'm gonna show you how I use Lightroom on the iPad Pro to make quick but effective edits on these dramatic landscape scenes. So here we are in Lightroom on the iPad Pro. Um, it isn't gonna be particularly easy for you to see because you can't see where I'm tapping on screen. If there is a way of showing where you're tapping while you're screen recording on the iPad, please do let me know because I cannot figure it out even after a while of Googling. But here we are, and I'm gonna go through these pretty quickly. Here are the three images that I've got lined up. These are from some shots I took on the Northumberland coast earlier in the year. Um, I really like the moody atmosphere and I really like this bright green moss that we've got on the rocks. And I wanna do a few tweaks to help really bring out that drama in this scene. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do, of course, is bring up the crop tool over on the right-hand side. And I'm gonna straighten my horizon and I'm gonna bring in this crop much closer, obeying the rule of thirds mostly, and really focusing the attention on the rock. I'm gonna click done. And you know what? I'm gonna bring it over slightly this way so that rock is a little bit more centered. Okay, it looks better. So I'm gonna open up the light. Uh, tab and I'm going to play my exposure bringing that down just a little bit. I'm going to leave contrast where it is um, and the highlights It's good with these tools like I've shown before just to play around move them up and down and see what it does Because I found that on this now if I bring those highlights down and we start to lose um, Some of the impact of the reflections on the water in the sand behind the rock I actually like having that in there So if anything, I'm going to bring up those highlights just a little bit uh, now the shadows, the only real place that the shadows are affecting is the rock itself and if I bring that up too much then it starts to go funny looking. So I'm going to leave it somewhere around here, just a little bit extra boost just so we can bring in some of the detail um, into that seaweed clinging to the rock that we can see there. Okay. Uh, the whites again, I might bring that up just a little bit because it does just help give the scene a bit more punch. But I think that is probably about it. So if we turn that on and off, we can see the difference that that's uh, already making. It's just giving it a little bit more punch overall. Um, I am now going to go into color. Now this is where a lot of the work is gonna be done. Now, overall, I already like the white balance as it came out of the camera. Um, if we just, for example, go into auto, things go very, very wrong. Uh, I don't like what it does with the tint and uh, it, we've got a much better starting position right where we are but I think the tint is a little bit too much in the magenta so I'm going to bring that down to I think plus 20 um, looks much more natural is much more what we want um, now I do know that I want to play with the vibrance and saturation in opposites now what I mean by that is if I bring the vibrance down to say minus 30 and bring the saturation up to plus 30 I don't really know why because I don't entirely know what these tools do but I do like the effects that you get by using the vibrance and saturation in opposite amounts it gives this sort of desaturated yet boosted effect it's difficult to explain until you actually start playing around with your sliders and having a look for yourself now I could try going the other way and boosting the vibrance to 30 and bringing the saturation down but I actually think the other way around did work best. So I'm gonna bring that down, vibrance 30 and saturation plus 30. If anything, I might go a little bit higher and go plus 35. I think that looks quite good. But still in the color tab, in the top right of the tab is the little color wheel. Tapping that brings up the color mix and here is where we have control over the individual colors. Now, as I said, I wanna bring out the green moss on top of that rock. So I'm gonna go into greens and I know that I want to boost it away from being quite a yellowy green like it is now. I want to make it much more of a deeper emerald green. So I'm going to bring that hue up to about there. Plus 15, I think, is where I want it to do. And I'm going to brighten it up by upping the luminance. Uh, already, that's really popping out of the scene a lot more than it did before. Um, the sand, to me, is a bit of a murky color. Um, and that's mostly in the oranges, of course, if you can see that by moving the hue up and down. I am going to bring it down to about minus 10-ish, but I'm also going to desaturate it by a bit because I want this image to be mostly those cool blue and green tones. I don't want as much of that 
orange from the actual sand coming in. So I'm going to bring that down to minus 35. And again, we can play around with the luminance. And I'm going to bring it down just a little bit like that. In the blue tab, I do want to bring that hue down a little bit because it's slightly in the magenta side. I'm going to darken it a little bit. And I'm going to boost that saturation because we do want those blues in there. And if we tap on the picture, that shows us before and after. And we can really see the differences that these changes have made so far. But I'm going to close the color tab. And on the right hand side, I'm going to go into selective edits. And on the top left now, we click for a new, um, a new mask. And I want to use a graduated filter. This just allows us to pull in this mask where we want. And as you can see, you can feather it more or less. But because I've got quite a harsh horizon line, I don't need to feather it all that much. I can bring it in here. And I know that I want to bring down the exposure, bring up the contrast, and then over in effects, I want to bring up that clarity and the dehaze. This just gives that sky so much more drama, so much punch. Those clouds become really detailed and separated and it really just gives such an amazing mood to the scene overall. If we look before and after, the sky suddenly looks so much more foreboding and I just love it. But I'm going to bring another one of those in, this time from the bottom. I'm going to feather it a lot more and bring it down here. And I'm just going to use the exposure to darken this down, adding a natural vignette to the scene. Or I suppose an unnatural vignette, you know what I mean. And now by using those two filters, you can see how the focus has been brought so much more to the rock in the middle. It just really pops out of that scene so much more. Now, there's not a whole lot more I want to do to this now. I'm very happy with the look that we've got. Um, zooming in on the rock, I love the amount of detail that's on this. I don't think there's anything else I need to do. I'm happy with the exposure. I'm happy with the amount of... Uh, seaweed that you can see on this rock and the colors I think look absolutely great um, I'm going to go back into lightness and just have a little tweak of that contrast I think by upping that just a touch I might actually bring those shadows back down to zero yeah that looks a lot better the last thing I do want to do though is just down at the bottom we can see we've got some of these little bits of detritus cluttering up my scene but that is very easy to get rid of in Lightroom as well by using the healing brush tool, selecting a size that's about that, and literally just painting it in. And then you can just move around and tell Lightroom where you want it to sample from. Now I'm using, uh, right now I'm using my, my Apple Pencil, which is just giving you a little bit more uh, control over where I'm actually uh, painting these things in. It just makes it a little easier to work and to add in dots as I'm doing now for these smaller bits. But I also do this a lot using just my finger as well. You just need to be a little bit more careful where you're prodding, particularly if you've got chunky digits like mine that don't give you that sort of fine grain control. The pencil does just make it much easier to be precise. As you can see, Lightroom is doing a really good job at removing these little bits um, if there's a lot of stuff to do or cleaning up large areas or big object removal, that's the sort of thing I would go over into full Photoshop for. But I just want to give you an idea of how I work on location very quickly in Lightroom. And I do do a lot of work on location using just um, Lightroom like this, even sometimes on, on my phone, not even on iPad. If I have taken a shot that I want to very quickly share to Instagram or to Twitter, Lightroom on mobile is brilliant for that. As you can see, it's done a really good job. It has just missed one little bit here. And suddenly we've got a much cleaner scene. Actually, there's one little, it's had a rock, I don't know what, but it's gotta go, and that, and that. Okay. Now I've got a much more clean scene. And if I turn that on and off again, we can see just how those few tweaks have turned the scene into a really dramatic image. Uh, I really, really like this shot. Um, 
I'm a little annoyed with myself when I took it because the composition is not great. Ideally, I'd have been shooting this from a much lower angle, which would have meant that the top of the rock would actually go above the horizon, which would make for a much better shot. Instead, it's going below the horizon. It, maybe it doesn't spoil the shot for everyone, but to me, when I look at it, I'm like, oh, I just wish I'd have taken the time to get a little bit lower, get my camera closer to that sand, make it a better shot. But hey, it is what it is. Um, Edits wise though, I think I'm pretty much done. And what I wanna do now is using these the little dots in the top right of Lightroom, I tap that, copy settings, and I'm gonna make sure that everything is ticked except for tools. Obviously tools are local adjustments and I'll need to apply those separately to each image. We just press tick, settings copy to clipboard, and we flick over into our next image. And what that means is that we just go into here again, paste settings, and we've got a very uniform color palette between the two images, which is exactly what we want. I don't wanna do drastically different edits. I wanna make sure that this very much has a, a general theme going on. So if we look before and after, we can see that again, that green looks much more vibrant and vivid. Um, yeah, it's looking, it's looking pretty good already, but um, we need to go into the crop tool. I need to straighten my horizon slightly, which I think will be about there. Um, and I'm gonna bring it down just to obey the rule of thirds. I like this because the rocks on the left and the rock in the middle both are in the thirds of the scene. So compositionally, I think this works a little bit better than the first one. I'm gonna press done. No, I didn't. I haven't done that time. But again, I need to bring back in these um, selective filters. And I'm gonna again, bring down a graduated one for the sky. Um, it didn't really look like I needed to bring down the exposure, so I'm going to go straight into effects. I'm going to bring up that clarity. I'm going to bring up that dehaze, both of which is going to really boost that drama, just like it has. And I'm going to bring in another one, but I'm going to feather this one a lot more. I'm going to bring it right up and then bring it down. And this is just going to help darken the bottom of the scene. But I do like the way that we see the reflection of that rock in the water towards the bottom of the frame. So I don't want to darken it too much. I want it to be subtle, which is why I feathered it so much. So that even though I'm bringing it down by, as you can see, minus 3.7 exposure, because there's such a big feather on that, it isn't actually darkening it a huge amount. It's just closing it in, drawing the eye a bit more to the middle of the scene. Press done on that. Now, if we have a look, I think that looks really, really good already. Um, but I do just think that this big rock here could look a little brighter, could stand out a little bit more. So I am going to use another selective edit. This time I'm gonna use the brush and I'm gonna use a smaller brush size. I'm gonna make sure that my flow is set quite low. That means that every time I paint on the screen, it's only painting a small amount of the effect. And as I swipe more and more and more, it builds up that effect. Um, just makes it much easier to create a natural look. So I start off by bringing my exposure up. And then as I swipe more and more using the pencil or just using the finger, whichever, you can bring in more and more of that effect. But because you're doing it bit by bit, you can make it subtle and it blends more with the scene. It doesn't stand out quite as much. I'm gonna add more on the rock on the left now. Just helping that highlight on the top edge pop a little bit more. And I'm gonna do the same on the rock behind it. As I say, it is quite difficult to see what I'm doing when you can't see the pencil on the screen. But hopefully you can see the effects starting to take shape. And if I tap on the mask, then you can see exactly where I've just been painting in. And then you can see if I start to play with the exposure, I can bring that up to about there. I think that starts to look good. I'm gonna up the contrast. I'm gonna drop the shadows ever so slightly. And I'm gonna up the clarity just to give it again a little bit more punch. I'm gonna press done. And if we have a look at the before and after, again, I really like what this has done to the scene. I didn't need to go into light or color because those are effects that have been applied from the previous image. The only thing I do wanna do extra is just take out this bit of, I don't know what it is. I'll just call it a bit of distraction. As you can see, it's very easily 
healed that spot. If we press done, you would never know it was there. And that's magic. Um, I'm going to try doing the exact same thing, but on this little patch. Okay, that's um, being awkward. I'm just going to undo that, undo, start again on that. Because I don't like this patch here either. I don't like that it's right next to the frame and sort of overlaps, but I don't know whether it's going to let me get rid of it. I also don't know why it's trying to move the actual mask around. Okay, so if I, I'm just, as you can see, I'm just moving the sampling point around the scene and trying to figure out where it's going to blend best. Maybe if I feather it a little bit more, it might help. I'll feather it less. Okay, let's go press OK. No, see when I have a look, that doesn't definitely in that area where I've just tried doing that, it does look quite mucky. So I am going to get rid of that point. I'm gonna go delete. Yeah. That's the sort of spot that maybe in Photoshop I'll get rid of. Maybe I'll try on this little spot at the top. Yeah, that's done a much better job. I'm happy just to, to get rid of that. Yeah, that that bit right here, I could probably do a better job of that in Photoshop. In fact, I could definitely do a better job of that in Photoshop. But the whole point of this video is, again, just to show you those very, very quick edits that I would do if I'm working on location and I just want to turn around a good looking shot in a short amount of time. Um, and I think that is what I would do on this scene. And so now again, I can move on to the next one and we'll try again with pacing the settings. Now, as you can see, it hasn't done as good a job because the color tones in this image, I took this, I think about 40 minutes later and as a result, applying those same effects hasn't really done a very good job. So I'm going to undo that and we're going to basically start from scratch with this one. Um, starting, of course, with straightening my horizon. And I'm going to bring that crop in a little bit more. I want the rock to be centered. It was really the rock that stood out to me when I was walking along this beach. I love the way it's got this S-shaped curve to it, the green moss on top again. I think it looks really, really nice. Um, so I definitely uh, wanted to stop and snag this quick shot. Um, my crop's done. I'm gonna start with my exposure. I'm gonna bring that up a little bit. I'm gonna bring the highlights down. I'm gonna bring my shadows up slightly. That's pretty much it for light. Going into color now, I can see that it's a little bit warm, so I'm going to cool it down. And my tint is a little bit in the magenta side, so I'm going to bring that down to about there. I think that's looking better. Uh, again, I'm going to bring my vibrance down and the saturation up, but not quite the same amount. I'm going to just leave it a few points below. And crucially, I'm going to go back into the color mix. Um, I know that I definitely want to bring down a lot of the orange of the actual sandy beach. So I'm going to move the orange hue down just a few points. And again, with that saturation, the luminance, I think I'm going to leave the luminance right in the middle, actually. Uh, I don't really want to do much with that. Um, but I do want to go into my blues. I'm going to bring that hue slightly down and I'm going to darken those blues a little bit. And again, punch up the saturation so that comes out a little bit more in the sky. And in fact, I think we might need to move that hue further down because it's looking quite magenta -y. Um It may be that there's quite a lot of magenta in the sky, but there is, as you can see, a lot of magenta in the sky. So I'm gonna bring that hue down to that minus 25 and drop the luminance a little bit. Okay, looking better already. Again, flick on and off, we can see what's going on. But again, we're gonna to need to wanna to use these selective edits. So I'm gonna bring in the graduated one for the sky. I'm gonna bring the exposure down just a touch. I'm gonna to bring the contrast up. Uh, effects then, I'm gonna go into clarity. We're gonna boost that and we're gonna boost the dehaze. Again, I just love how much that cloud texture just suddenly pops out from the sky and we get this amazing, moody, dramatic sky. It's a wonderful way 
of showing off the drama of landscapes like this. Uh, again, I want to bring in another one from the bottom, darken that down, just helping draw the eye to the rock in the center of the scene. Looking good. I did realize I didn't do anything with my green, so I'm going to go back into that color mix. I'm going to boost those greens much more into the emerald because right now, as they are in the middle, they're quite a yellowy green, and I don't want that. I want that proper emerald green that it actually was to really pop out more. So I'm going to bring that quite high, plus 33. I'm going to up that luminance, and that looks about it color-wise. I think that's looking pretty cool. Now, I just realized in light, I'm going to move the global exposure down just a few drops. It's looking a little bit too bright overall. But then what I do want to do, I'm going to zoom in slightly, and I'm going to use the brush tool again. Small brush, low flow, up the exposure. And again, using the Apple Pencil, or just a finger, I'm going to brush in selectively just some extra light around on the S of this rock, which is just going to help make that green really pop out and just help the whole rock in particular just pop out of a scene in a way that it doesn't necessarily right now. I think this is going to look good. And again, if we just tap that, we can see where I've applied that mask going right the way around. And this is helpful if you are using an Apple Pencil or a stylus on an Android tablet. It is, uh, it is helpful to have that for that sort of precision. It's, it's the sort of work I would do using a graphics tablet on my, um, on my main uh, computer normally. Oops, I've just moved it, so don't want to do that. Okay, let's try in the middle. As you can see, we can bring that exposure up. I'm bring the highlights down a bit, up the contrast, and drop the shadows a little bit. And pop it with a little bit more clarity. So that is everything that I want to do for the edit of this image. But again, there is a little bit of cleanup that I want to do, particularly what looks like some dog paw prints. I don't know if it was a dog that we brought with us. We did have one on the day, but it should be a fairly easy fix. We just want to go around tapping and painting over these paws. And Lightroom should just do the rest. It does seem to be doing a pretty decent job of it. Yeah. Just like that. I am always very impressed with how well Lightroom, and this is the same on a phone as well, can um, oops, can do this sort of editing. It does a very, very good job, and I only find it's the particularly complex um, objects that need full-on Photoshop removal. Lightroom does it really, really well. I'm not going to do everything. There's just a few bits that rock up there and then around here. Um, I'm not sure about some of these. These might be a little bit too complex, but give it a go. You can see you can move the point around where it's sampling from. So if it doesn't look quite right at first, then you can say, actually, no, why don't you try sampling from over here? And um, that'll probably do a little bit of a better job. You just move it around until it looks like it blends more naturally. Sometimes if you're getting rid of lots of maybe dust in a scene, or well, this is a good example, it, it looks at this and because it sees to its left um, other lines, it thinks, oh, there should be a line there. So it's decided to sample from down here. And as we know, we don't want that. So we move it around until it just fits in with the sand and that looks great. Okay, this one here didn't really work, so again, let's move that. Looks better. Oh, this one, for some reason, decided that it was going to sample from the rock. Not the rock, of course. We can sample from Dwayne, the Rock, Johnson, all we want, but I don't think that's going to help our image. And I'm going to take rid of this one. I know that is just a rock in the scene, but it just it's a little bit of a distracting one. And there's a few other little pebbly bits here that are just catching my eye in a way that I don't quite like. So I'm going to get rid of those two. So I think then that is me done. Hopefully this has been a helpful video. 
These are short and sweet edits. I like the scene already and it's a beautiful bit of beach. There's not a lot that I'd really want to do. This is just quick global edits and it's the sort of thing that is very easy to do on the iPad because it's so quick to do those quick edits. But I do hope this video has been really helpful to see how I would do this work on location just using the iPad. If it has, please do hit that like button, subscribe if you don't already, and I will see you next time.